If you're looking to buy a property here in Javier, Spain, and in need of a mortgage, this is the video for you. It's important that clients realize that they need to pay at least 30% of the purchase price. Uh, so that means they can apply for a mortgage of 70%. Then they have to add to that the taxes, which are minimum 10%. Yeah. So today we're joined by Sabine Bataille from Bank Inter here in Javier. Uh, thank you for being here, Sabine. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, financing a property in Javier, uh, in Spain, uh, and specifically mortgages. And um, well, you're the best person I think to have around to, to talk about uh, this. I'm really happy to have you on here. Um, thank you for the invitation. You're welcome. But to start out with, um, can you tell a bit about who you are and what you do? Okay, I'm the manager of Bank Inter Javier. Bank Inter Javia celebrates 25 years in Javia uh, this, this month. So uh, we specialize in all retail banking, private banking, corporate banking, but in Javia specifically in mortgages for residents and non-residents, uh, mainly people who buy a second home mm -hmm. in Spain. You're already giving the difference here but about non-residents and residents in Spain. Um, of course, there's a big difference between uh, them and what, what they can loan or especially the down payment they have to... Uh... Yes, but here we are very used to dealing with foreigners who are yeah. non-residents here. Non-residents mean that they uh, work abroad and that their income is in other countries, that their documentation and tax returns are in other countries. And this is not such a problem uh, these days, so uh, we do mortgages for people from all over the world mm -hmm. fairly easily. Yeah, so imagine I'm somebody and I'm looking to buy a property in Javier, um, and I'm starting the process of you know, starting to look which house I like and not, um, and I want to know a bit more about my financial situation. Um, would you recommend it to start talking to the bank first before you start in your search? or? Uh, what yes. would be the right moments to...? I would definitely recommend uh, to come and see us uh, mm -hmm. because it's, it's very easy to just walk in, make an appointment mm -hmm. um, and come and have a general chat about the situation, about the income, the documentation required, about how we calculate the capacity of borrowing um, and that's totally free for any client and I think it helps a lot and it gives the security that the client is looking for a property that he probably will be able to afford and finance uh, within reason. Um, so I would definitely recommend to have this first chat at the beginning when starting to look at property and then uh, later when the client is in a situation where they've found a property they really like or maybe already have made an offer uh, then start the uh, finance application. Yeah, because I can imagine it's it's hard to know um, where you exactly stand, especially as a non-resident in Spain, as a foreigner, you come here and you know the rules might be just a bit different or what you're able to 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 loan based on your income. So I yeah. think, especially in that situation, it's and also in in different countries, there are different ways of presenting income and taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of countries like Holland, Belgium where rental income is not taxed, mm -hmm. so it doesn't appear on the tax return, but it doesn't mean we don't take it into consideration. As long as the client can provide uh, evidence of this income or rental contracts or bank statements showing the income, then we will include this as well. So it's important for the client to know what documentation we will request and how we will look at it. Yeah, well, I think that's really good also to know that a bank actually, the bank actually does that f for people when they come here. So it's not just applying for the mortgage, but you really check their situation, of course, yes. and advise them. Uh, and we are familiarized with the different situations in the different countries. Mm -hmm. um, also, a lot of people who come here have got their own company, and it's important maybe to study their own company and the situation because uh, a lot of business people 
don't generate much income or don't have many assets in their private name, but they will have it in their company. Mm -hmm. And we will include this information as well okay. to make it easier. Yeah. And when it comes to down payments, because of course that's, that's quite a, well, a relatively big thing here in Spain, because it works quite different as, as in other Northern European countries. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell a bit about the percentage of own money you actually have to bring uh, yeah. before being able to get any mortgage at all? It's important that clients realize that they need to um, pay at least 30% of the purchase price. Uh, so that means they can apply for a mortgage of 70% of the purchase price, even if the property valued up uh, much higher, then they wouldn't be able to finance more. It's always based on the purchase price. And so if they require 30% down payment, then they have to add to that the taxes, which are minimum 10% here. Yeah. So in total, it comes to 40% of own funds okay. for any purchase. So it's important to take that into consideration because some people think they've got the capacity of uh, borrowing much more because their income is good. Mm -hmm. but the banks won't do that because they will base the financing on the purchase price. Exactly. And is that the same, uh, well, is that the same for non-residents as for residents or are there different percentages? For residents, we will go up to 80% okay. uh, if it's their uh, main residency. Okay. Uh, this is according to law, really. Uh, but we will consider a resident really somebody who generates income in Spain yeah. and who uh, does a tax declaration in Spain. Yeah, so basically anybody who is not a Spanish resident who, who wants to buy a second home here or something, like, they would have to think about the 30% plus that's the tax. Exactly. exactly. Okay, I think that's really useful for a lot of people to know because that's, yes. like I said, something different, we're not really used to it. And I yes. can imagine that when you come here, you don't always take that into consideration. You actually have to bring uh, quite some yes. own money. Okay, um, and what would be some other things uh, you would think people need to know when they're trying to apply for a mortgage? Well, once uh, somebody has decided on the property and made an offer and it's accepted, then normally uh, there is some time to start preparing the finance, uh, do some legal due diligence. Um, I recommend at that stage they come to the bank again mm -hmm. to start the finance application. Um, and any bank who does a mortgage will need a valuation. Uh, a valuation is also a full legal due diligence. So it's good if the client instructs a valuation early, uh, at the uh, early stage of the mortgage application, because it will provide full information about the property and also about the legal status, apart from the value. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you avoid surprises later down the line when you uh, come to finance the property. Um, the valuation is valid for any Spanish bank. If a valuation is requested, to uh, an officially authorized valuation company, company authorized by the Central Bank of Spain, then this valuation can be used for financing in any Spanish bank. So if finally the clients decide to go for a different bank because the offer is better, then they can take this valuation with them. Okay. When we complete a mortgage, uh, we normally complete the mortgage and the property purchase at the same time. Mm -hmm. And the bank will make sure that all taxes are paid, all debts are released from the property, and that everything is legally registered, and there are no liabilities for the client or for the bank. So to have a mortgage with a Spanish bank uh, gives extra Mm, tranquility to the client really. Exactly and on the date of the notary so when people are actually signing to buy yes. the property it's true that sometimes the in most cases the bank is, is there as well right? Yes. Yeah. The way it works now is once a client has got a mortgage approved mm -hmm. uh, we will start preparing all the contracts and these contracts are sent from Madrid to the notary of the choice of the client from that moment on, we need to wait a minimum of 10 days in this area uh, to be able to sign the final deed as well as the, mor uh, the mortgage. 
And in these 10 days, it's, uh, the, the client will make an appointment with the notary and the notary will have to confirm that the client is totally aware of all the conditions and uh, how the mortgage will be signed off. Okay, so it's like, yeah, but everything is quite streamlined. I can, I can tell where, yes. yeah, people know how to contact who and in the end the notary. Yeah, also everybody. a lot of clients panic because obviously a lot of documentation are in Sp is in Spanish. Mm -hmm. It has to be that way because it's official documentation, mm -hmm. which is shared by notaries, by the land registry, by the banks. Uh, but the notary will have to confirm and make sure that the client has understood everything and is aware of all the conditions, whether it's uh, the notary speaking in English or bringing in a translator in any other language. Or So before signing the final documentation, it will always be translated if necessary. Yeah, I think that's a quite a good one you're right now touching on because of course, there's a lot of people from the Netherlands, from the UK, from Germany, Belgium, I mean, you name it, I think yeah. they, they'll be living here. Um, and some of them don't speak Spanish. So I think, if, if I'm right, you have, you speak multiple languages, yes. right, in the bank. How do you support people that are in that situation and, you know, they're not able to understand Spanish uh, perfectly? Well, at the office, uh, we speak Dutch, uh, German, French, um, and English, mm -hmm. all of us more or less. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, which is also, it makes it easier for the client because the client doesn't need to uh, translate any documentation. Mm -hmm. We will do that and we will explain our securities department what the situation is. So during the whole process, um, most of the documentation and all the communications with the client will be in their own language. It's just at the end when we have to uh, do some official documentation, which has to be in Spanish. Exactly. Okay, yeah, because I think we have quite some notaries around here who speak yes. English right now as well, so they can translate it, which is, uh, which is really helpful, of course. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah, I think we, uh, we got quite some good information here. I think that yeah. will be really useful to, to anybody out there who is in that situation and think about, you know, we're going to have to apply for a mortgage in Spain and how do we start? So I think. Yeah, you really helped uh, answering that question. Yes, they know that uh, it's not a strange situation for us. Mm -hmm. Somebody from abroad coming to uh, ask for a mortgage, uh, that we are very used to dealing with clients from all different nationalities, from documentation from all different countries, and that it's uh, totally free for the client to come and ask for a mortgage offer. Uh, there is no commitment or no obligations involved for the client and so I would definitely recommend to any client wanting to buy a, a house here in Spain to come to a bank and, and ask for all this information and ask for an offer. Okay, well thank you so much. I think that's thank great you. information <laughs> to close it off with. And if you're looking to this video and you have any other questions or you simply want to get in touch with Sabine, I will put her details down below in the description. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest videos.